All right, so this is the June 13th meeting of the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Committee meeting. All remote, we are um, recording and recording um, lives at Northampton Open Media. So anytime anyone wants to go there and review video, that's where it is. Uh, we have a pretty um, short agenda today, um, and but we'll start out with public comment for any items that are not otherwise on the agenda. If um, anyone has something to share that's not on the agenda, we can start with that. Adele, your hand is up. Thank you. Go for it. <clears throat> This is related to an item that's on the agenda, but it, it's a little different. Um, it pertains to pending legislation um, <clears throat> that our rep our Senator um, Joe Comerford and our Representative Lindsay Sabadosa have both introduced um, into their chambers um, that would require an expansion of the fossil fuel free building code. Um, I think that the reasoning was that Northampton um, wanted to do that and wanted to be part of the um, fossil fuel free pilot test, um, but is unlikely to fit into the 10 communities that will be allowed. And so therefore they have introduced legislation that would allow any community to join the fossil fuel free pilot uh, that wants to. So, um, so I was thinking, and uh, so far I've, I've asked Lindsay and Joe both, and Lindsay has already gotten back to me saying yes, um, whether <clears throat> I have asked them whether uh, having a letter of support from the Energy and Sustainability Commission in Northampton would be helpful. And Lindsay said, absolutely, yes. And I haven't heard from Joe yet, but um, if you all approve it, um, I can work with Carolyn to uh, draft, I can provide Carolyn with a draft letter of support and she can modify it as she sees fit. Thanks, okay. Adele. Um, we can take that up at another point on um, on the agenda, uh, maybe after we finish the other items, if that makes sense. Um, okay, is there are there any other um, public comments? Okay, great. Um, even though we uh, had Adele send me the minutes right away after the last meeting, I did not format them and send them to you all. I apologize. So that'll have to wait till the next meeting. Um, so we don't have an action item on that um, for today. So um, the next item that we have is discussion of the draft bill for the CCA reform and draft letter of support. and. Um, Adele sent those um, as well for the committee to review. I forwarded those on to you um, as a, attachments to the agenda for today's meeting. Um, so we could go ahead and open that conversation about that and then maybe take the other item um, that Adele just mentioned after this one. Um, so Adele, did you have any in interest in doing any kind of presentation about the um, bills that were um, submitted? Um, <clears throat> I believe that the commission at an earlier meeting um, discussed the bills, um, but basically uh, they require DPU to act more quickly on uh, applications for aggregations, community choice aggregations. And as as we all know, uh, we are hoping to submit our application very soon. And um, we don't want to wait forever for it for approval. So, um, so <clears throat> the, what these bills would do, there's three of these bills. Um, 
is shorten the time frame to 90 days that DPU has to approve the, the uh, or disapprove uh, the applications. And then um, uh, if they don't act within 90 days, uh, the, the application would be considered approved. And this is consistent with other states that have similar aggregation programs. And hopefully, um, will not be necessary because with the new DPU appointees, uh, we're hoping that the DPU will act more quickly on aggregation applications. This is a fail safe. Yes, I think we did talk about that last time. So I think it's really, um, I mean, these have already been um, introduced by, as, as Adele said, so I don't know that there's any um, further action that the committee needs to take or if there are any questions about that. Um, just to tie into what um, Adele mentioned, and I don't know how many of you came, went on to the CCA um, meeting a week ago, public hearing last week. Um, but we're still within that 30 day comment, public comment period. And um, so our application won't go in until the first week or second week of July. Um, and then that starts the, what we've been told is up to a two year review period, unless something like this, you know, it's interesting. Even if something like this passes, who knows whether how effective it will be to get um, changes, but or if it will affect um, our application. But I guess anyone can hope that that would be the case. Um, however, we're at this point, you know, we're still assuming that it's going to be quite a long, more than the um, 90 days. Um, so. Anyway, that's the status of the application. So probably by our next meeting um, in July, um, we can I can certainly confirm that whether or not it's been submitted officially to DPU. So I believe the, the action on today's uh, agenda is to approve um, some version of the letter that that has been sent around to the commissioners, is that correct? And then and then to send it in to the um, TUE committee that will be considering this legislation. Oh, true. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. did I? I think I sent that to members. Did you guys get a copy of a draft letter? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry. It was so last year that I sent that that I can't remember. Sorry. Um, did anybody have any comments on that letter? Any edits? Any suggestions? None. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pull it up here because there may be, if we don't, I can. Um, screen share it for anybody else who didn't receive it directly. Um, and then otherwise, uh, I guess we could, um, let me just pull this up. And screen share it. Okay, Joint Committee on Telecommunications. Can you see that on the screen? Do I need to yes. make it bigger? There. Okay, so just in the event for those folks who might not have received this directly via email, um, we Northampton Energy and Sustainability members urge the TUE, Telecommunications, Utilities and Energy Chairs to support the bills, um, Senate, 2145 and House 3219 to support load aggregation programs in the Commonwealth and more recently introduced H3852. 
The allowance of 90 days for DPDU to consider each aggregation application as provided for these bills should be sufficient for due consideration. Northampton, Amherst, and Pelham are planning a joint electrical aggregation program and therefore are concerned about the very long delays from DPU in addressing the already long list of aggregation applications. We would like assurance that our aggregation program will not face similarly long to delays. We urge the TUE to conduct hearings on the above bill soon and to subsequently give them a positive report early in the legislative session to bring them to the floor so that DPU will need to confront necessary, unnecessary delays as a matter of law. Sincerely, Energy and Sustainability Commission. Um, so we can, if there are no changes, um, I can put this into sort of letterhead with the Energy and Sustainability Commission um, letterhead. Uh, alternatively, um, or in addition, I can also see if um, the mayor wants to sign on separately or if she wants to do it on her letterhead. So um, if maybe we should take, um, I'll take a motion to send the letter um, and a vote for that. And then uh, if you guys are open to it, I can just um, confer with the mayor's office to see if they want to send it sort of as a package or just separately under the Energy and Sustainability Commission's um, letterhead. I, I move nope. that we uh, approve the letter to be uh, signed by the uh, Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission. Is that the session? session? Okay. Who is that, Louie? Okay. And I have to do a roll call because we're on Zoom. So I will start with Pat. Yes. Louie? Yes. Marissa? Yes. Rich? Yes. Um, ben? Yes. And um, just so you know, I'm sorry I should have introduced this further. So that passes. Um, Angie Gregory is here. I should have introduced her. Um, she is a new commission member, but her term doesn't start till July 1, according to the city clerk. So that's why we're, she's not voting, but she's just sort of sitting in. And apologies, Angie, for not uh, formally introducing you at the beginning. But we see your black square. So thanks for coming. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm or not having some trouble with my internet at home, so my phone, but okay. thanks for the intro. Yeah. I heard the little warble in your audio, so I think you probably are having some internet connection. <laughs> it's slow. <laughs> okay, great, thanks. Okay, um, and then um, beyond that, we have um, just um, counselor updates and department um, updates and reports. So I will start with city councilor updates. And Marissa, you're the only city councilor here today. So do you have any updates for us? Uh, I don't have anything in, in particular. Um, I know that uh, Rachel might be working on something, but um, I don't have a report on that. Uh, we've all just uh, slogged through budget season and got through all of that. Um, I guess I would just uh, just note that I'm really proud of how um, for the city and uh, for the mayor's budget, um, getting cap up on its feet and getting that fully um, moving forward. And, um, and I think there's some things, uh, we'll have more as the summer goes on and, and we roll into the, the fall because I know there's some things to get but nothing in particular today, I'm sorry. Okay, that's great. Um, so then that moves us to department head updates um, or department updates in particular. So um, does anyone wanna volunteer first or should I read through the list? I, I can go for central services, just a quick update. Um, as you know, uh, Josh Singer, the new energy officer, is starting on July 5th. 
and I've been trying to uh, move along certain items in Chris Mason's uh, binder. Um, one of them is trying to just begin the process of doing a plan for where EV chargers go in the city, um, uh, moving slowly but surely. Um, the other one is uh, uh, executing a, a Green Communities Grant, a $5,000 TA grant for um, the Forbes Library reversible chiller, and also a Green Communities Grant of about 50 grand for insulation at Leeds School, James House, the Academy of Music, um, and Forbes Library. And we're actually um, about to begin some of that insulating uh, with the contractor this month. So that's moving ahead. Um, and I think, what else? Oh, Chris contacted me yesterday to <laughs> potentially enter some SREX into it's something I've never done before, but he said, I have a, a Zoom meeting with him tomorrow that I guess we have a deadline of Thursday to get these uh, SREX up on the auction. So I'll be working with Chris tomorrow to try to meet that deadline. Um, and I feel like there's one more thing, but I'm drawing a blank. So I guess that's it. Hi. Um, so, Pat, I, of course, you're not obligated to do anything, but um, that list of things are things that I had some involvement with. Um, yeah. And if you wanted to, I, I'd like to meet Josh anyway. Um, and if you wanted to set up something so that, um, well, so that we can make sure he's clear on what the intention was on some okay. of these things and that we... Uh, you know, uh, to the best of our ability, try to avoid errors. Um, I, I'd be happy to help help out with that. Thank you. Yeah. I was thinking also of reaching out with you to help with the um, the chiller RFQ, some of the yeah. the technical side. Yeah, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, one, I, this is just an aside, but I decided to hire our local HVAC contractor, RL Cody, mm -hmm. to go in and get that uh, chiller. He said he could probably get it up and running for less than 10 grand. So uh, since it's going to be another year. Um, yeah, I mean, that's I'm what we talked to... about was nursing it along. Right, exactly. I, I mean, we might have a compressor to change or something, but it seems worth to get another year out of it. And is William Towsley the consulting engineer on that project or? Uh, no, I have to RFQ that. Oh, you have to RFQ. Okay, yeah. So, okay. yeah. Uh, anyway, then we don't have to take up this time with it just yep. just let him know that i'm around and can help thank you i appreciate that just to clarify josh isn't starting till july july 5th. so yeah he's not part of the conversations now i think particularly with what pat's doing with the um srx and that kind of thing so yeah, I, there's one more thing but i just can't think what it is you can have uh, another important. bite at the apple if you need to <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um louis you look like you wanted to say something. <laughs> well, about it's about energy codes um, and uh, the ongoing saga of the new mass energy code. Right now, um, and and I spent a bunch of time uh, in the last month in training seminars, and there's another one. Now they're coming in two hour bites instead of only one hour bite. And one of the things that seems to be one of the things that was pointed out at the last one of the last trainings was that we now have three people deeply involved with the energy code and one is the international code council they wrote the book that mass code is based on and then mass board building regulations and standards has historically and traditionally amended the international code so that the massachusetts version of the energy code doesn't match um, the international code. It, it has some areas where it's more stringent and actually has some areas where it's a little less stringent. And then the DOER came with their several hundred pages of energy regulations. And I feel like I've got to wait a little bit and see how it sorts out because the, 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 the new state building code which has been promised for three or four years now is 
is supposedly going to be in effect pretty soon, maybe July 1st. I don't know. And what I'd encourage people to do is wait a minute before we get too far down the road on some of these projects. I know that people that are doing planning are like dancing around trying to decide which way to go. Um, and I've heard a lot in a lot of I'm hearing from some people that it's going to be less expensive to build to this to these new standards and but I'm hearing from other people that it's going to be a lot more expensive. Uh, I don't even know what the standards are going to be yet quite what's it going to shake down they have words I don't understand what that means when you look at the like cross section of a of a apartment building exactly quite so anyway enough ranting I'm that's my rant well I have a question a follow-up question on that so how does that relate to the city's push to uh, adopt the opt-in specialized code if we don't really have a I mean won't that be piggybacking uh, that's well that's part of the way that this whole thing got fractured and, and splintered is that now the department of energy resources is wholly responsible for um for the um you know the uh the energy code until the bbrs gets their code promulgated and then there'll be a discussion and they'll be able to see what the BBRS is going to add to the process, probably not going to be able to take anything away from it. So I think we vote on it, but I think we may be, it, this is more nuts and bolts for people who are looking at housing development things. Um, and uh, I've all, and I'll talk about um, geothermal at some point in, down the road, but that's another piece that's part of the energy code and, and it and uh it's it's maybe what if you can do, if you can do geothermal you can build almost anything <laughs> you don't need to insulate it just put geothermal in it. <laughs> so anyway okay great thanks um rich anything uh thank you carolyn uh first of all i just want to say uh my apologies to the commissioners that i have been absent for two months i was away for part of that and then uh our meeting uh in april uh was like the arbor day uh crunch time so very busy so my apologies but i'm i'm back i went on vacation for two weeks it was very nice to go it was nice to, i went down south so it was very interesting to see i hadn't been there in a long time and i drove everywhere so i got to see a lot of different things um they have a lot of trees they've planted down there. Um, they also have a lot of uh, roundabouts everywhere in the places uh, that I went to, which I thought was uh, really very cool. So um, as far as like department-wide updates, I don't have department-wide, but sort of in our little tree, our urban forestry uh, commission and our uh, forestry department, the, the city was awarded uh, our uh, 16th in a row Tree City USA award. Um, so that is, uh, you know, a tree city USA, if you're not familiar is, um, is sponsored by the Arbor Day foundation. That's probably one of the oldest programs in the, in the country, um, that has a vision for greener, healthy America, um, and hope this initiative, uh, would inspire change on a nationwide level. So we've been doing this for about 16 years. Um, there are 3,600 communities in all 50 states that are part of this, um, one of the main criteria is the amount of spending per capita that is done uh, citywide in, in Northampton. The the minimum to receive the award is two dollars per capita. We're in the high twenties at this point. Um, we also, as part of this award, uh, we received our seventh um, growth award uh, in a row, which uh, has uh, reflected um, major milestones. It reflects major milestones and annual activities in five different categories um, to help build a sustainable community forestry program over the long term. So two really important things um, that uh, we've been very fortunate to uh, to have been awarded. Um, I got to have to give a lot of credit to the city's urban forestry commission um, and um, the, the continued commitment by our elected leaders to continue to um, work towards uh, maintaining and uh, restoring a healthy tree canopy. So thank you. 
So I, I maybe the next meeting I might have some other larger DPW wired updates. Um, okay, so um, I have a couple of updates. Um, one is um, sort of to tag along to the, you guys may have already heard this, but um, it's not, not my department, it's the new department that's not quite formed yet. Um, but the, the CAPA um, department head was posted um, this week after the budget passed last week. So that's moving forward. Um, and of course, under that um, department will be Josh Singer and the procurement, chief procurement officer for the city. Um, so that's moving ahead. Also, um, I think I brought this up previously, but um, you know, I've been working a little bit with Pat. We're working on the um, sort of as part of the um, acquisition of 298 Main Street for the um, resilience and um, resilience hub. Um, you all may know that we were um, unsuccessful in lobbying um, Eversource to be able to connect that building, reconnect that building to gas, um, even though the gas line is already there and there was a meter void <laughs> on the side of the wall. Um, so Eversource says that our only option is to go with propane. So on, uh, we will have to install um, propane tanks in the ground just to as a sort of temporary stopgap measure to provide heat to that building so we can get operations up and running as soon as we can for the hub at the former Baptist Church building. We're probably, I, we intend to take um, ownership and title of that building this week. Um, and the next step will be to sort of figure out that process um, to contract out for um, design services, but also to have the tanks installed um, so they're ready to go. On a parallel track, we also um, contracted with um, a design firm to look at the feasibility of um, converting that building along with Forbes Library to geothermal on its own separate district. Um, so that study is underway. I need to connect with our with the um, consultant who's um, started that to see um, where they are in that process. But it just is at the beginning of that process. So the idea was sort of install these propane tanks and then as a stop, you know, short term measure and see about the feasibility of going to converting everything to ground source um, heat pumps. Um, yeah. Ben. <laughs> uh, so the it, since this is a real resilience hub, it will have generators, right? Backup generators. Will they be able to use the propane tanks? It, uh, assuming late, later on it, the whole thing is geothermal and mostly propane is not doing anything, will the propane tanks at least have a future use as a fuel storage for generators? Building code, uh, yes, they do. What's that? Building code wise, that's that's completely acceptable, and there may well be an exception in the um, energy code to allow emergency generators to use fossil fuel on site fossil fuel. Um, good, good question. Um, we weren't sure. I mean, so you know, we've sort of talked about anywhere from you know filling them in on site and you know disconnecting and filling them or taking them out um but nothing's you know nothing's set in stone of course we don't even have them there yet so um but that's a good thought the i will say as part of the other piece of this equation is we um had and this was started before wayne left he reached out to, um, um, now I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the um, company um, who was offering grants for looking at solar energy um, and solar energy sort of backup systems, resilient systems. So we have, um, we are going to start looking at that as an option just for 
um, 298 Maine. So we have that feasibility study um, paid for through this grant and that they'll be looking at potentially backup battery storage for um, um, generators um, for that building as well, sort of backup energy for that building. Um, so, so, so you probably know where my mind is going, which is that we have multiple studies interacting with simultaneously happening investments. And what I'd hate to have is to throw good money after bad. You know what I mean? Like to to, yeah. to have a study that tells us actually you shouldn't have done this, you should have done that. And I'm just thinking about Forbes where Pat is talking about a chiller, a reversible chiller, which is gonna use, it, it's designed to uh, reject or accept heat from some source could be the ground <laughs> and 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 you know move move it through water and then you've got this resilience hub which would certainly be more resilient if it shares if it's got a a more uh variable load that it can share with forbes um so like an immediate question is okay we're putting in propane tanks to heat the place what is the current heating system and will it be compatible with a geothermal heat pump in the future because it would be a shame to invest in the wrong thing now. Um, right. And so with the batteries, you know? Yeah. Well, no matter what, I mean, we're, so uh, if people may not realize, but this building already has a brand new HVAC system installed and set up for gas. So no matter what, we're going to be dealing with some kind of amortization of a new system that has never been operated because it's been sitting there for eight, 10 years. Um, oh, okay. So, you know, we're not going to be buying a system to connect to propane. The system's already there. It's just what fuel is right. going to be used to get it running. But okay. I, to I get your, uh, it totally makes sense, your point. I just want to clarify that piece yeah. that we're sort of taking what's already, you know, existing and trying to figure out what the stepping stone is to getting us to a more resilient and fossil fuel free. So, so I guess the main thing, you know, just from all these things that are coming together is at some point when there's an RFQ for the, for Forbes library, when there's the battery study you just mentioned or other type of storage, because of course there's thermal storage as well. Um, the grounds, the, the micro ground micro district essentially study having some way in that contract language that as we start paying these <laughs> these engineering firms to do studies for us that they're talking to each other yeah yep makes sense um i think there was one other thing on my list let me just see here um so the only other thing I announced, Angie um, Gregory is joining us. We also have another new member um, who is not here today, but who's also been sworn in. So for July meeting, we'll have um, two new members and a new staff person, Josh Singer, um, joining us. And then we'll, we may know a little bit more about the leadership of that new department. So. That's um, all I have. Carolyn? Yeah. Hi, I, I did think of one uh, council thing um, that I forgot to mention if uh, you're through with the department reports. Sure, go ahead. Okay. So just briefly, I just wanted to mention that um, one of the things on the agenda for the next meeting is um, an ordinance to lower the, def the un default or unposted um, speed limit, which is to say any road where there's not um, a speed limit posted. Um, the state has allowed cities to elect to lower it from 35 to 25. And uh, that is on the agenda. It was um, in legislative matters last night. We send it forward to the full council with a positive recommendation. Uh, and it is a, um, it's a measure that is, 
little bit aspirational, but also, you know, if it actually worked and people did slow down, would improve uh, pedestrian and cycle safety, and as well as having uh, benefits for the reduction of uh, uh, fossil fuel use and uh, those kinds of things. So um, I know it's a it's a it's a good measure that I'm glad to see going forward. Um, if anybody wants to come and speak in support of it, I don't expect it to be particularly controversial, but um, I did want to just mention that. I know uh, I early in my term. Uh, ben and Adele, when I met with some folks, this was on their list of things um, that that uh, they thought would be worth pursuing. And um, it's been a long journey uh, through a few councils, um, but it's it's finally, I think, going to um, move on through and we uh, will be acting at the next meeting. Thanks, Marissa. Um, Question, Marissa? Yeah. Is there any benefit in some sort of a statement from NESC on this? I mean, it, it couldn't hurt, but I, like I said, I don't think it's going to be controversial. It was okay. unanimous. It was unanimously forwarded by the um, legislative matter. So I think it's, I think it's going to come and become a part of our lives uh, very quietly, um, except for that. I hope it, I hope the city will be following it up with what needs to happen, which is, it's really the education and information around it that will help it achieve the goals. I mean, cause it's not an enforcement. I mean, like the police aren't gonna be outright tickets. I don't, no. you know, I don't see that being part of the the equation. And, um, but we're, we're hoping it will influence road design and planning and um, and that the, the communication around the change being made will put it in people's minds um, to slow down and be thoughtful about, you know, there's there's all kinds of benefits, I think, to, to this this move. So um, so it couldn't hurt, but I, I frankly don't think it's going to be necessary. I think it's going to pass easily. Okay. Um, thank you. And then just to um, circle back to Adele's question about a letter of support for Joe Comerford's new bill. I think that's something that we should look at and it should be on the agenda, posted on the agenda and with a draft for the committee to review um, ahead of time. So I would suggest Adele, if you can forward, if you do have a, a draft letter or if you wanna forward the legislation to me um, so we can put that on the next agenda, um, I'd be happy to do that. I will do both, thank you. Okay. Any other miscellaneous items that you all want to discuss before we close? Okay. Great. Thank you. Good to see you all, and we'll see you next time.